Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Jayadeep Shodangi, Faculty Department of English, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. Friends, we are into module 19, Elizabethan Sonnetiers. This module is prepared by Dr. Kalyani Dikshit, who teaches English in a college in Lucknow. Friends, the Elizabethan age is known for sonnetering tradition. In this particular module, we are going to learn how sonnet evolved in the Elizabethan age in England. We are also trace back its root in Italy. We are also going to discuss on different technical details about sonnetering traditions. We are to look into the contribution of different sonnetiers of the Elizabethan period and we are to assess them in the context of their time and generation. The Elizabethan age is noted for the sonnetering tradition and it is we must mention at the beginning the publication of Sir Philip Sidney's Astrophil and Stella in the year 1591. Within the period of just six years, some 20 sonnet sequences got published, but the entire Elizabethan era is marked for its poetic output in the form of sonnets. We must not forget the contribution of three very important personalities in this context. Number one, Sir Thomas Wyatt, who remained instrumental in bringing the tradition from Italy. Then Henry Howard and the Earl of Surrey and they came out with a printed collection of poems in the year 1557 AD. The title of the collection was Total Smithsonian and look at the year of publication. So, it was historical by all aspects of the term. Shakespeare, the biggest exponent of the period accepted this form and modified a little bit to contextualize with his own genius. Friends, let us talk about what a sonnet is. The word sonnet derives from the Italian word sonetto that means little song. As per William Hazlitt, the great object of the sonnet seems to be to express in musical numbers. With undivided breath, some occasional thought or personal feeling. So, sonnet is a thought process. A sonnet may be defined as a lyric consisting of 14 lines, but there are some exceptions as well. It conforms to a fixed tangent pattern and a rhyme scheme. Even the number of syllables is fixed in each line. Normally, a sonnet contains 14 decasyllabic rhymes, decasyllabic lines. Most of the sonnets are composed in iambic pentameter. Iambic means unaccented followed by accented syllable. Friends, now let us talk about the formulae of a sonnet. What is the details of a sonnet? A sonnet is octave plus sestet. Generally, 8 plus 6 is equal to 14 lines. Alternatively, it can be 2 quatrains and 2 t that is 2 into 4 and 2 into 3 that is tacets that is 14 lines. Alternatively, 3 quartets and 1 c that means 3 into 4 plus 2, 2 is a couplet amounting to 14 lines. Now, here if you look on the board, S is sonnet, a poem of 14 lines, O is octave, 8 lined stanza, S T is sested, 6 line stanza, Q is quatrain, 4 lined stanza, T is tercet, 3 lined stanza and C is couplet, 2 lined stanza. With all these, let us talk about the Gangotri of sonnets. That means, how did the sonnet origin? 
as we have already mentioned that sonnet originated as a form or genre of poetry in Italy. Sonnet took its origin in the 14th century in Italy. Francesco Petrarca, popularly known as Petrarch, was born in 1304 and died in 1374, fixed the form of sonnet. That means Petrarch is called the father of sonneting tradition. Theodore Watts Dunton, in his article in the earlier edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, refers to Guiton of Arizo as the first sonneteer. Piero del Vezini had already contributed some sonnets before Guido I. It is supposed that the quatrain order and the rhyme scheme. A B B A, A B B A, C D C, C D C was launched by Guetton of Arezzo. Sonnet form was also used by Dante Alighieri in his work like Vita Nova and Congenier. The rhyme scheme used by Dante was A B B A, A B B A that means 8 lines, C D C, D C D that means again 8 lines, C D C, D E D, C D E, C D E and C D C D C D. He wrote in complicated tercets amounting into 14 lined stanzas. Now friends, the Italian sonnets. If we can categorize as the first half sonnet in tradition, it is Italian sonnets or Petrarchian sonnets. Italian sonnets are otherwise named as sonnets by Petrarch. Italian sonnets were generally divided into an octave, a combination of two quatrains, and a sestet, a combination of two tercets or three couplets. Francisco Petrarca, Petrarca wrote approximately 317 sonnets. His sonnets were dedicated to his beautiful beloved or lady love called Laura. Italian sonnets are also known as Petrarchan sonnets as we have already stated that. In these sonnets the octave rhyme scheme is A B B A A B B A. But the rhyme scheme of the sestet varies as C D C C D C or C D C D C D. So there are two alternatives in the sestet. Dante wrote only 51 sonnets. His sonnets were dedicated to his love Beatrice. His Vita Nova contains only 25 sonnets. Now, friends, as we have already stated. From the Petrarchan group of sonnets, we can switch over to the Elizabethan mode. The Elizabethan sonnets, the sonnetering tradition which came to England in the third decade of the 16th century. Sir Thomas White and Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, imported this form from Italy to England, which is considered to be historical in the sonnetering tradition. He composed 31 sonnets. He modeled his sonnets of Petrarch, but with a slight change in the rhythm scheme of the sestet. He followed the pattern of A B B A, A B B A, C D C, sorry C D D C, E E. This innovative step of using the couplet at the end of the sonnet is taken by Mr. Watt. Now, friends. We can never forget the publication of the Tottles Miscellany we have already stated that contains the poems composed by White and Surrey. The Petrarchan scheme was changed by Surrey. He used three quatrains and one rhyming couplet. The rhyme pattern used by Surrey is A B A B C D C D E F E F and G G. This rhyme scheme is popularly known as Shakespearean rhyme scheme later on. Most of the Elizabethan sonnets were written on the theme of love, religion, politics, 
friendship and the onslaught of time. So, there are some sonnets relating to the transience of time. Friends, look up there on the screen, a typical Italian sonnet in a table. The octave consists of argument or proposition, sestet is a resolution. And remember, for the Italian sonnets, the ninth line is the most crucial line of a sonnet there the turn takes place. The turn is also otherwise named as volta that changes the mood or tone and tempo of a sonnet. Friends, on the screen you have a comparative analysis of the Italian and English sonnet from the structural point of view. If we consider Italian and Petrarchan sonnet on the left, there is octave and sestet or two quatrains plus two tercets or three quatrains and three couplets. So, there are three different alternatives, but for the English sonnet, three quatrains and one couplet. 3 quatrains means 3 into 4, 12 lines and couplet mean 2 lines. And the rhyme scheme A B A B, B C B C, C D C D, E E. Now, after a little bit of discussions on the sonnet formation, tradition, history, legacy of sonnet form, now let us look into some of the contributors. The first major contributor is Henry Howard the Earl of Surrey. He is famous and associated with, it with the publication of Tottles Miscellany, which opened up doors of English poetry for sonnets. Surrey's most famous sonnets in the collection are A Renouncing of Love, The Lover Compareth His State to a Ship in perilous storm tossed on the sea. Look at the long title. That hope unsatisfied in the lover's hurt as a prolonged death and the lover having dreamed of enjoying of his love. Thomas Watson, born in the year 1555 and died on 1592. He was one of those Elizabethan sonneteers who contributed in the development of this foreign form of art. His collection Passions or Poems of Love contained 100 poems. Although all these poems were termed as sonnets, but they were all 18 lines long. So, he deviated a little bit from the stereotype structure. These sonnets were composed in three six line stanzas, that means six into three, eighteen lines. Friends, we can never forget the contribution of this man on the screen, Sir Philip Sidney. Sir Philip Sidney's famous sonnet sequence is Astrophel and Stella, published in the year 1591. It starts the era of Elizabethan sonnets in real term of the sense. The songs and sonnets of this collection are addressed to a lady called Penelope Deverex, who is called Stella in this sonnet sequence. The tone, style and tempo of these sonnets remind us Petrarch and Ronsard. The language is gracefully archaic and his most famous sonnets are To the Nightingale, To the Moon, The Apples to Sleep, To His Mistress Dog. 108 sonnets of Astropel and Stella are tender voices of a love-torn heart. 
friends up there Edmund Spencer. Edmund Spencer 1552 to 1599 is also known as the poet's poet. You must remember this phrase. His early collection of sonnets was a theater for worldliness. It was influenced by Marot, Sir Philip Sidney and Bally. His second sonnet sequence was very popular and almost historical amorati. Amorati means little cupids, little love. It contained 89 sunny sonnets. These sonnets are evidence of his love for Elizabeth Boyle, whom he married later on. The rhyme scheme of his sonnets was ABA, BBC, BC, CDCD, GG. That means he contained with uh, the rhymed couplet at the end. Some of these sonnets are contained in three quatrains and a couplet. That means 3 into 4 plus 2 into 2 lines, that is 40 lines. Edmund Spencer. Some of these sonnets contained three quatrains and a couplet, and this sonnet can be divided into three sections. Sonnet 1 to 57, that is record of the chess of the beloved or love. Sonnet 58 to 77, that is speaker's humility at getting success in his venture, and sonnet 78 to 89. Speaker's yearning for his pretty beloved who is not present due to some reason. So, Edmund Spencer's sonnets can be divided into three separate groups as stated just now. Friends, here comes Fawkey Granville. Fawkey Granville, 1554 to 1624. Sorry, 1554 to 1628, was born at Workshire. He was a good friend of Sir Philip Sidney. He wrote two tragedies, Alham and Mustafa. His best work for life is renounced the work on Sir Philip Sidney. He is believed that he knew William Shakespeare and helped him at the beginning of Shakespeare's career. His most remarkable work of sonnet is Silesia. His poems express thought, currents of the age, and he is a committed artist. His poems are not pure sonnets, since they are written in different meters and structural deviations. Friends, no discussion on Elizabethan sonnets and sonnetiers can be completed without Michael Drayton. Michael Drayton 1593 to 1631, he did not last for a long time, but he wrote Idea, The Sefford's Girland and Ideas Mirror, Ideas Mirror in the year 1594. The second book of the collection of 64 sonnets addressed to Idea. Idea was the name given, uh, given to Annie. Sir Henry Goodry of Penur, his youngest daughter, and he married to Sir Henry Rensford of Seaford. And the and Drayton was greatly inspired by Watson, Daniel, Sidney, and Mr. Shakespeare. The parting is treated as a magnificent poetical work, just like a typical English sonnet of the form poem is divided into three quatrains and a couplet. That means 3 into 4 plus 2 lines, that is 14 lines. There are some other artists as sonneters of this age, like Henry Constable, who composed 23 sonnets under the title Diana. The influence of French poets was clearly visible in his sonnets. His sonnets are marked by his lyrical propensity, quality, beauty, concepts, verbal jugglery, 
and genuine passion and sensuous charm. Friends, we have a separate module coming up on William Shakespeare as a sonneteer, but here we will just mention in a little way, in a very small way. William Shakespeare is the biggest exponent in the art of sonnetary tradition during the age of Queen Elizabeth. He composed 154 sonnets and the first half of sonnets are addressed to Mr. W. H. a friend and the second half to a dark lady. Sonnets of William Shakespeare are lovely expressions of an innocent heart and they are times onslaught. Most of these sonnets are remarkable for their subtle thought and exquisite expressions and he perfected the art in a great deal. Friends, there are two other sonnetiers we must mention in this connection. Number one, Thomas Lodge and number two, Barnev Barnes. Thomas Lodge, 1556 to 1625, published his sonnet sequence, Phyllis, which contains sonnets along with poems of varying length. Pastoral and idyllic spirit is present in his sonnets. Love appears as a dedicate passion in his sonnets. In sonnets 4, in his collection, he presents the lover mourning, lack of art and rather power to move his beloved. A ruthless beauty has been the source of pain for the poet. Whereas Bernice, 1571 to 1609, he lived for very short period and composed Petrarchan love sonnets in Parti Partinophil and Partinophil. And Partinophil is the name love and the Partinophone is the name of the beloved. Both the names mean virgin lover and virgin respectively. He also wrote divine century, century of spiritual sonnets. Friends, as we have viewed this particular module, we try to assess the sonnetering tradition and its contribution. We started our discussion with the sonnet as an art form with weighing its origin from Italy. We traced back the legacy to Italian origin. We have had discussions on the characteristics of the Italian sonnet format as well as we contextualized it in the British counterpart. We have also looked into the contribution of the sonnet years with specific details in connection with the age of Queen Elizabeth. So, the Elizabethan sonnet years were both intimate and original. We have looked into that they welcomed this important art form and changed its vistas so that it could be suitable to their context. Sonnets become the medium of re revelation of soft and tender feelings in England. The basic things of these poems were love, nature, religion, personal relationship, intimate feelings, dreams and values and the conflict between time and love. The fact is that Elizabethan sonnet was more personal in tone and expression than the Petrarchan. These sonneteers followed Petrarch, Dante, Ronsard and Du Barry. Very few of them exhibited genuine passion and emotion, but most of them really dazzle as the significant contributors of the age of Queen Elizabeth. Thank you.